Good evening and welcome to News Tonight on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tina Jha. Let's begin with the day's headlines. Diwali gift for central government employees and pensioners. Government increases dearness allowance by 5% from 12% to 17%. Cabinet also announces relief for farmers without Aadhaar cards. All farmers to get Kisan Samman Nidhi till November. Home Minister Amit Shah addresses three rallies in pole-bound Haryana, hits out at opposition parties and lists achievements of BJP governments at the centre and the state. Devendra Fadnavis also hits out at NCP Congress combined in Maharashtra. BJP wins both Rajya Sabha by poll. Sudhan Trivedi from Uttar Pradesh and Satish Chandra Dubey from Bihar elected unopposed. Chinese President Xi Jinping on two-day India visit on 11th and 12th October. Informal talks with Prime Minister Narendra Modi to be held at Mamalapuram in Tamil Nadu. Ahead of the visit, Chinese ambassador says border dispute will not hinder progress of bilateral ties. A Nobel Prize in Chemistry announced John B. Goodenough of the United States, Stanley Whittingham of Britain, and Akira Yoshino of Japan win the Nobel for development of lithium-ion batteries. Bringing cheer to 50 lakh central government employees and 65 lakh pensioners ahead of Diwali, the Cabinet on Wednesday approved a hike in their dearness allowance from the current 12% to 17%. The hike, to be effective from the 1st of July 2019, would result in an additional outgo of 16,000 crore rupees annually for the government. My colleague Panchanan Mishra brings us this report. The government on Wednesday hiked dearness allowance given to central government employees by 5%, envisaging an additional annual outgo of 16,000 crore rupees. The cabinet also approved dearness relief to pensioners with effect from 1st July 2019, representing an increase of 5 percentage points over the existing rate of 12% of the basic pay or pension. There is a growth in the past 2 or 3% growth. This time, there is a इसके आयोज में दिए जाएंगे और इसका फायदा लगभग 50 लाख केंद्र सरकार के कर्मचारी और 65 लाख जिनको पेंशन मिलता है उनको मिलेगा। The government has also sanctioned a relief package for displaced Kashmiri families. An amount of five and a half lakh rupees will be given to each family. These 5,300 displaced families were earlier left out as they had settled elsewhere in the country but came back to Kashmir later. The Pradhan Mantri Ji had given a package in 2016 for the first time of the year, for the first time of the year, for the first time of the year. They had given the name of the Jammu Kashmir, so they didn't come in that list. In today's decision, in these 5,300 displaced families, ये साढ़े पांच लाख रुपए प्रति परिवार देने का एक ऐतिहासिक निर्णय हुआ ये उनके साथ न्याय हुआ है। यूनियन मिनिस्टर प्रकाश जावड़ेकर आल्सो सेड दैट द कैबिनेट हैज डिसाइडेड टू फर्दर एक्सेलरेट द आयुष्मान भारत स्कीम। ही सेड दैट 31 लाख पीपल हैव बेनिफिटेड फ्रॉम द स्कीम सो फार एंड ओवर थ्री � उस आयुष्मान भारत के लिए 31 लाख से ज्यादा लोगों को हॉस्पिटल में इलाज मिला है आज तक साढ़े तीन करोड़ से ज्यादा लोगों को परिवारों को कार्ड मिला है 
और ये गति से अभी बाकी परिवारों को तक भी पहुंचेगा इसमें भी केवल दो राज्य सहभागी नहीं हुए हैं बंगाल और दिल्ली इन अनादर डिसीजन द कैबिनेट हैज एक्सटेंडेड टिल थर्टीएथ नवंबर द मैंडेटरी रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ आधार सीडिंग फॉर रिलीज ऑफ बेनिफिट्स अंडर प्रधानमंत्री किसान सम्मान निधि The benefit of six thousand rupees is to help farmers buy farm inputs ahead of rabi sowing season. The scheme provides income support of six thousand rupees per year to landholding families, subject to certain exclusions. With inputs from Panchanan Mishra, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Chinese President Xi Jinping will be in India on a two-day visit beginning Friday to take part in the second informal summit with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Both leaders are expected to hold comprehensive talks on issues concerning bilateral relations and exchange views on regional and international issues. President Xi will attend the second informal meeting with Prime Minister Modi at Mamalapuram near Chennai starting Friday. This is the second informal summit between Prime Minister Modi and President Xi after the Wuhan summit held last year. Ahead of Xi Jinping's visit, the Chinese envoy to India Sun Myung said Both nations should resolve disputes peacefully through dialogue at the regional level and jointly uphold peace and stability in the region. As the only two major developing countries with a population of over 1 billion and also as two important representatives of emerging economies china and india relations transcend the bilateral dimension and assume a global and strategic significance so the two sides should strengthen our strategic communication enhance political mutual trust give full play to the irreplaceable guidance of our two leaders on bilateral relations and ensure that the accurate transmission and solid implementation of the consensus reached by the two leaders And my colleague Kriti Mishra is in Mamalapuram to cover the Chinese President's India visit, and she sent us this ground report. So we've reached the coastal town of Mamalapuram in Tamil Nadu, the town that is set to host second informal talk between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chinese President Xi Jinping. The first informal meet between the two leaders was held in 2018 in Wuhan. In fact, a look into archaeological evidences show. historical ties between mamallapuram and china several chinese travelers visited mamallapuram coins found here also testify trade with china in ancient times you can see behind me a grand structure is being built to welcome chinese president xi jinping in fact it has turned into a heavily garrisoned town elaborate security arrangements have been put in place the visit is expected to boost historical cultural and trade ties between india and china reporting from mamallapuram with camera person yogesh i'm kriti mishra for rajya sabha television and on to some other news vice president m venkaiya naidu will embark on a two nation tour to africa on thursday this will be the first ever visit by such a high level dignitary to comoros an archipelago situated off the southeast coast of africa and also to sierra leone Soon after arrival in Moroni, the capital of Comoros, the vice president will meet the president of the Union of Comoros, Azali Asmani. He is also scheduled to address the Indian community living in Comoros. He will also interact with the president of the Assembly of the Union of Comoros, Abdu Ausani, and also address the parliament before departing to Freetown, the capital of Sierra Leone. In Sierra Leone, the vice president will meet President Julius Mada. and later hold delegation level talks with him following which both dignitaries will witness the signing of key agreements the vice president will also meet the speaker of parliament and interact with the indian community there before emplaning for delhi this will be the second visit of the vice president to africa 
Remember earlier in November 2018, he had visited Botswana, Zimbabwe and Malawi as part of strengthening bilateral ties with those countries. BJP National Spokesperson Sudhanshu Trivedi was elected unopposed to Rajya Sabha in by-election from Uttar Pradesh on Wednesday. The seat had fallen vacant uh, after the demise of former Union Minister Arun Jaitley. The BJP leader has been working for the party for a very long time now. And the BJP also rested the Rajya Sabha seat in Bihar which had fallen vacant upon the death of former Union Minister Ramjeet Malani. BJP leader Satish Chandra Dubey was declared elected unopposed since no other candidate had filed nomination papers for the bypots. Party समय समय पर सभी कार्यकर्ताओं को कोई ना कोई दायित्व देती रहती है उसी के अनुसार मुझे भी समय समय पर जो भी दायित्व मिला मैंने उसका अपनी क्षमता के अनुसार उपयुक्तता के साथ निर्वहन करने का प्रयास किया और इस दायित्व में भी मेरा यह प्रयास रहेगा कि पार्टी की छवि पार्टी की विचारधारा हमारे नेतृत्व श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी के व्यक्तित्व की आभा के अनुरूप मैं अपने इस दायित्व का निर्वहन कर सकूं Filing of nominations for block development council polls in the state of Jammu and Kashmir ended on Wednesday. Nominations for the polls began on 1st October with the issue of notification. The scrutiny of nominations will take place on Thursday and the last date for withdrawal of nominations is Friday. The polling will be held on 24th of October from 9am to 1pm while the counting of votes will begin at 3pm the same day. Hundred and twenty-six IPS probationers of the 2018 batch called on Prime Minister Narendra Modi today. Interacting with the probationers, the Prime Minister enthused the young officers to work tirelessly with dedication for the betterment of India. The Prime Minister asked the officers to imbibe service orientation and dedication to their day-to-day -day work. He also stressed on the importance for the police force to be connected with ordinary people. In an interactive session with the IPS probationers, the Prime Minister said that the role of police should be focused on crime prevention. He also highlighted the importance of technology in creating a modern police force today. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi also visited an exhibition at the residence of Chief of the Indian Air Force, Air Marshal RKS Bhadoria. The theme of the exhibition was self-reliance through innovation and indigenization. The Prime Minister also presented certificates to the officers of the Air Force who took part in this exhibition. The ambitious Pradhan Mantri Innovation Learning Program Dhruv will kickstart from ISRO in Bengaluru on Thursday and conclude on the 24th of this month at IIT Delhi. 60 talented students from science, mathematics and performing arts have been chosen for the program. पूरे देश के अंदर ऐसे छात्रों का चयन करके और उनको आगे बढ़ाने की दिशा में प्रधानमंत्री नवाचार शिक्षण कार्यक्रम जो आयोजित हुआ है वो कार्यक्रम 10 अक्टूबर से शुरू हो रहा है 10 अक्टूबर से बेंगलुरु में शुरू होगा ये जो बेंगलुरु में शुरू होने वाला कार्यक्रम है वो इसरो के अंदर होगा आज इस कार्यक्रम में प्रधानमंत्री जी के वैज्ञानिक प्रधान सलाहकार भी उपस्थित होंगे इसरो के चेयरमैन भी होंगे 30 गणित और विज्ञान के क्षेत्र में और 30 आर्ट के क्षेत्र में कला के क्षेत्र में उत्कृष्ट प्रतिभा को रखने वाले प्रखर छात्रों छात्राओं का चयन करके एक ही टीम बनाई गई है जो इसरो से इनका काम शुरू होगा और 10 से शुरू होने वाला ये शिक्षण कार्यक्रम ये 23 अक्टूबर 2019 को आईआईटी दिल्ली में इसका समापन होगा 
Defence Minister Rajnath Singh said on Wednesday that he had fruitful deliberations with his French counterpart Florence Parley, during which they reviewed the full spectrum of the bilateral defence engagement. Both leaders held the second ministerial level annual defence dialogue in Paris after France formally handed over the first Rafale fighter jet to India. The Defence Minister also addressed a delegation of CEOs representing some of France's leading defence industry majors at the end of his three-day visit to France. He said India has taken a host of measures to attract investments in the defence manufacturing sector and is open to any further tax rationalisation that may be required to encourage the Make in India initiative in the sector. Minister Barley and we discussed a number of topics related to defence industry and the collaboration on technology. Some of the issues we are facing were mentioned. I got a reassurance from the minister for solving those issues. Primary aim of meeting today is to explore ways to strengthen our defence industrial partnership. I hope this event will provide a traction to our to our pitch for Make in India and will be equally beneficial to you to engage with us. We have undertaken significant economic reforms to improve the ease of doing business and opening up the economy for investments. Our government under the leadership of our Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi has opened up defence sector manufacturing to a large extent under the Make in India initiative. Back home, days after the Reserve Bank of India cut repo rate by 25 basis points, the country's largest bank, the State Bank of India on Wednesday, lowered its marginal cost of funds based lending rate or MCLR by 10 basis points across all tenors. The rate revision becomes effective from the 10th of October. SBI's one-year MCLR comes down to 8.05% per annum from 8.15% per annum, making home loans cheaper for the borrowers. This is the sixth cut in MCLR by SBI in the financial year 2019-20. Three researchers won the Nobel Chemistry Prize on Wednesday for the development of lithium-ion batteries. John B. Goodenough, M. Stanley Whittingham and Akira Yoshino share the prize for their work on these rechargeable devices, which are used for portable electronics. At the age of 97, Professor Goodenough is the oldest ever Nobel laureate. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences said the trio will share the prize money of 9 million Swedish kronor, the lithium-ion battery is a lightweight, rechargeable and powerful battery that is used in everything from mobile phones to laptops, even electric cars. The trio will receive the prize from King Carl XVI Gustav at a formal ceremony in Stockholm on the 10th of December. And let's now get you all the news and updates from the two pole-bound states of Maharashtra and Haryana. Let's begin with all the election stories from Haryana. Home Minister Amit Shah has promised to send home every illegal migrant in the country before the next parliamentary elections, as he invoked the NRC, Article 370, and the Rafale purchase during an election rally in Kethal in Haryana. The Home Minister also attacked the Congress over criticism by its leaders of the Shastra Puja performed by Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on the Rafale fighter jet handed over to India and France on Tuesday. Referring to the row in Assam over the National Register of Citizens, Amit Shah said that for 70 years, intruders have put a question mark on the country's security 
and that the BJP government was committed to evicting all of them from the country. कांग्रेस पार्टी ने धारा 370 हटाने के खिलाफ रिपोर्ट किया है हरियाणा चीफ मिनिस्टर मनोहर लाल खट्टर आल्सो एड्रेस्ड अ पब्लिक रैली एट एनआईटी इन फरीदाबाद ऑन वेंसडे ही हाइलाइटेड द वर्क डन बाय हिज गवर्नमेंट इन द लास्ट 5 इयर्स लेट्स लिसन इट अगर हमारा 5 साल का पिछला कार्यकाल आपको बाकी सरकारों से ठीक लगा हो उसी कंडीशन में आप भारतीय जनता पार्टी के प्रत्याशी को जिता दी आप जब इस विधानसभा क्षेत्र से अगर राणा जी को भारी बहुत से जिताएंगे तो निश्चित रूप से जो हमारा पचहत्तर प्लस का टारगेट है उसको पूरा करने में आसानी होगी आपको हमारा पचहत्तर प्लस का जो जो नारा है है मंजूर Former Finance Minister of Haryana Sampath Singh, who recently quit the Congress Party and joined the ruling BJP in the presence of Home Minister Amit Shah on Wednesday. In fact, Singh had resigned from the Congress on Monday, alleging that he was not given his due in the party. He joined the BJP at Mayhem shortly before Amit Shah was to address an election rally there. The veteran leader's decision to quit the Congress came as a setback to the party. He had been a minister in the erstwhile INLD government in the state before he quit the regional party to join the Congress. But he claimed that he was not given his due share even though he helped the Congress come to power in Haryana back in 2009. Let's now shift focus to the other pole-bound state of Maharashtra. <music> Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis has said that the opposition Congress and NCP have already accepted defeat ahead of the assembly polls in the state, pointing out Congress leader Rahul Gandhi's absence from the campaign. He said the alliance partners are in a defeatist frame of mind and the NCP is half empty, referring to the exit of several leaders from the party in the run-up to the polls. The chief minister also attacked the opposition's manifesto, saying they made all the promises in the world as they were going to lose and would not have to fulfill them. Besides, he also lauded his government for the work it has done in the last five years, vis-a-vis -vis construction of roads, providing drinking water, electricity, housing and healthcare facilities to the poor. Senior NCP leader Ajit Pawar has downplayed Congress veteran Sushil Kumar Shinde's statement about the merger of the Sharad Pawar-led party with the Congress party. Shinde caused a flutter on Tuesday when he said that the NCP and the Congress will come together. Ajit Pawar, who is the nephew of NCP Chief Sharad Pawar, said the remarks were Shinde's personal opinion. He also said that the Congress and NCP had fixed their target to win more than 175 seats out of the total 288 constituencies in the October 21 Maharashtra Assembly elections. Saying the parties work separately but have come together as a part of an alliance against the BJP-led NDA. Sushil Kumar Shinde's remarks assumed significance in the backdrop of several prominent leaders of Congress and NCP crossing over to the BJP and Shiva Sena in the run-up to the state elections.
Congress and the NCP is facing its worst political crisis in the Marathwada region of Maharashtra as several senior leaders have either joined the BJP or the Shiv Sena. While in the past two assembly elections, BJP and Shiv Sena have strengthened their positions in the region. Here's a detailed report on why the Marathwada region plays a vital role in Maharashtra politics. One thousand nine hundred five nominations have been filed across forty-six assembly constituencies in eight districts of the Maratwada region. The region has been in the news recently for drought and the way it affects the region's farmers. B, did the district infamous for farmers' suicide, also falls under this region. The region consists of eight districts: Nanded, Hingoli, Parbhani, Jalana, Aurangabad, Bid. Latur and Osmanabad The area has mostly been dominated by the Congress and the NCP but BJP made an impact with its performance in the 2014 assembly elections In the Marathwada region BJP won 15 seats in 2014 increasing its tally many fold from 2009 when it had won just 2 seats On the other hand Shiv Sena won 11 seats in 2014 also adding to its 2009 numbers but Congress and NCP combined saw a 50% decline in its seat share In 2014 Congress won just 9 seats which was half of what it backed in 2009 while its alliance partner NCP lost 4 seats in 2014 Three seats went to others This year NCP is facing its worst political crisis as several of its senior leaders have either joined the BJP or Shiv Sena. Those who have left the NCP include Vijay Singh Mohite Patil, Padma Singh Patil and Madhukar. These were the stalwarts who formed NCP with Sharad Pawar. On the other hand, Congress veterans are fighting to regain their feet in the Marathwada region. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. And that's it from us in this bulletin. Good night.